Now we are going to start with some magnetic circuits with air gap leading to the typical magnetic circuits used in electric machines. So I have a large air gap here and two salient parts. Each part carries N I and turns carrying current I. If you apply the right hand rule, you will find that the flux is going down here and going there. So this surface, the flux will be going out. This surface, the flux will be going in. We define a surface that is emitting flux as North Pole and the surface that is receiving flux as South Pole. The total magnetomotive force applied on the air gap is 2Ni and you can find B gap is mu naught to Ni over G. What will happen now is I'm going to insert, first introduce some curvature, didn't change much of the geometry, provided that the areas are the same. I inserted a cylinder here, an iron cylinder. I try to keep that this air gap at the top and the air gap at the bottom, when you add them up together, you end up with the same air gap. The flux lines will first we insert the coils. We put the coils like that. We end up with the flux line like this. Of course, they are not just like that. They close around themselves. So the flux line will behave like this. You have to remember here that the flux line enter the iron and leave the iron perpendicular to the surface. And if the surface is a curvature, then this flux lines will be radially oriented. So this configuration here, we can see how the flux is behaving and we can say, oh, this is now the flux is going out of here. So that's north and it's going into this surface. So this is south. So we call this a, a two pole arrangement. The previous configuration uh, was a two pole machine. A four pole configuration is like sh what is shown. Again, the flux lines will enter and leave the iron perpendicular to the surface and they go on a closed line. For example, this flux line will go something like that. And then here it will cross and here it will cross radially and here it will do something like that. And this one will go this way and this way. So uh, the flux lines will be as shown. And if we travel uh, across the air gap from this point and going uh, clockwise, we will see somewhere here there will be no flux. Somewhere there the flux will be substantially constant and here it will go zero. The flux will be uh, pointing in one direction and then it will reverse. So the distribution of flux density will be as shown and let's follow it. Let's consider at point A. Point A here, it's between poles, the flux is zero and I will move clockwise. So I'm moving this way. As I move this way, the flux will increase and the flux density will increase. Then between under the pole face, the flux will be substantially constant. So point B here, midpoint, it's constant. This will continue to somewhere here. And I say I can see the flux if I'm moving this way. The flux is coming towards me. Coming towards me, I called it uh, whatever, one direction, let's call it north. Then, and carry on moving to point C, point C is midway, so the flux lines, no flux lines, so flux density is zero. Going for, again, moving uh, clockwise, I will find that the flux is going away. This flux is going this way, going away from me. So it's opposite to what it was under this surface. We just reverse the direction it will be substantially constant between the edge of this second pole to the third. And when I reach this point here, it will go zero again. Then the same cycle will be repeated. 
we call this north-south dust flux going in one direction, this is going in the other. We can reverse them if you like, but the uh, convention is if the flux is going out of a surface, it's north. If it's going into a surface, it's south. Anyway, that's the flux distribution. And if you calculate it, we'll talk about this in a second. We'll just actually say, if we ignore the reluctance of the iron, and I showed you a couple of slides earlier, justification to this. You remember the case when we considered uh, a, a flux path in the iron, which is 300 millimeter, and the air gap was five millimeter, and we found that if we ignore the, all the reluctance due to the iron, which has very high, several thou thousand of relative permeability, we found that the flux uh, calculations will not be affected too much by ignoring the reluctance of the iron. If we ignore the magnetomotive force required for the iron parts, i.e. we assume mu r for the iron is infinity, we end up with the expression, the maximum flux density here is mu naught ampere turns per pole. Every pole has n turns. Sorry, n, this is not n, this is scribble. n turns carrying current i divided by the air gap length and the air gap length here is g so this is a very simple expression doesn't matter how complex the shape is this is a four pole the previous slide was two pole you can extend the geometry to any uh, uh, number of pool pairs and you can use the simple expression to calculate the uh, flux density, the maximum flux density in the air gap. Another configuration that appears in the machine is this one. It's an inversion of the previous one. Now we have the uh, poles are on the rotor. Again, flux lines go in closed circle so circuits, so it will be like this. the radial in the air gap and you will find that the flux out of this surface and into this surface and uh, here the flux lines will be doing something like that if you follow the air gap you will find the distribution is as shown and Again, the flux density, the maximum value of the flux density is mu naught ampere turns per pole divided by the air gap length. Well, so far we considered the cases where magnetic field was produced by using a, a winding that is concentrated. And some machines, we need to distribute the winding. Why we need to distribute it, I will we'll come to that in a second. So the other type of construction that appears in electric machines is the distributed winding. And the distributed winding we can be introduced by considering this cylinder. And the cylinder has one coil side going this way, other coming the other side. If this the current the direction of the current then the flux will be uh, upward anyway to make it simpler to follow we use uh, a 2d sketch and here we have the rotor this is an arrow going in yes that's current going in the other side current coming out yes current coming out from that the flux distribution will be as shown what i did here i just inserted another tube around it and created some air gaps. If we look at the inner cylinder, the flux distribution, you find that the top half, the flux is going out of the surface. The bottom half, the flux is going into the surface. In other words, it will be something like this. I know this the sketch looks looks very much like, reminds me of the French flag, but uh, 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 the point I'm making is the top half will be magnetized in a direction opposite to the 
bottom half. That's north and south. And we only used one coil and two coil sides. The distribution of the magnetomotive force around the periphery of the, this structure will be as this. If you look somewhere here, there are no flux lines. Moving this way, clockwise, you will find the flux lines are going in one direction. Yes. Then you reach this point here, it goes down to zero. This is the other coil side. Beyond this point, you find that the flux is pointing the opposite direction. Yes, it's opposite direction. This point, of course, this point here, it's, it's exactly, it's this one there. We just went around the circle. So, let me remove this annotation. Now, this is the uh, magnetomotive force and flux density distribution. And this will have a harmonic, first uh, fundamental and uh, harmonics. Of course, if it's a, a wave as shown in the solid black, it will have high content of harmonics. How we need to reduce that, so we need to play a bit with the shape of this waveform. And what do we do? Well, here in this case, we considered three coil sides. And here, you will find the flux lines as shown. Different situations now. You can see flux line, the, the flux line indicated by A has the, the, the magnetomotive force, the current, the total current enclosed by the flux line shown by A is one current. B and C enclose one, two, three. If you look around, all the current enclosed by B and C is three. So you end up with a distribution of the magnetomotive force Fa is one third of Fb and Fc. You end up with a step waveform like this one. Step to waveform like this one would have a fundamental and the harmonics, but of course the harmonic content will be better than, well, will be less high order harmonics than the just one step square wave. Anyway, by certain design techniques, it's possible to obtain a MMF distribution, which is very close to sine wave. So close, in fact, that we can, it's a common practice that we assume it's sinusoidal distribution. We will deal with such winding arrangements when we considering special machines. All what I wanted to do in this presentation is to start with Ampere's circuit law, very simple that you all remember or should know from physics, or if you didn't remember it anyway, I revised it today. And from that, we moved into magnetic circuits and started modifying the magnetic circuits a bit. And then we found the construction of laminations in machines. And then we decided to distribute the winding and we found that we can distribute the winding in slots. These slots can be either on the rotor and the inner cylinder or the outer cylinder. And we will discuss this in details later. So later on, when we discuss AC machines, and I start by using the number of ampere turns or coils and currents in slots, and I adjust them to give me a waveform that is sinusoidal, you know that I'm trying to get MMF that is sinusoidal because we'll, as we will see later on, if the flux density distribution is near sinusoidal, then the voltages induced will be sinusoidal. We'll discuss this in the next, uh, not the following, but the next presentations. We'll talk to you then.